bags. Thanks for tuning in to Accounting is a Joke. I'm Dr. Who, and it's always my humble pleasure to add some fun in the fundamentals of accounting. On this platform, you don't need boring textbooks or confusing tutors as we chase the bags with this accounting information. Remember, gang, accounting ain't hard. It's really a joke, and I'm here to teach you the punchline. Bags! Okay, as of now, we should already know that inventory is one of the most critical assets for a merchandising company because it allows the company to generate revenues and earn gross profit. Throughout any given period, inventory is constantly being purchased and sold at various amounts. At the end of the period, an issue arises in where we have to calculate the cost of ending inventory for the units we have left that will report on the balance sheet and the cost of the goods sold for the units that we have sold that will report on the income statement. In this video, we will be applying the LIFO method. LIFO basically means last in, first out, which equates to the last purchases of inventory at a particular period will be the first to be sold. So without any further ado, let's take a look at an example of using LIFO under the perpetual system. Okay gang, we are getting ready to rock and roll with the LIFO method, which will allow us to calculate the cost of goods sold and the cost of ending inventory. But a few things that I wanna go through before we get started. One, we are practicing the perpetual system. And based on the perpetual system, it dictates that we adjust our inventory after every sale or every purchase on the books. Therefore, when it's time to account for the cost of inventory, which we're about to do, we have to break it down from a sale to sale basis in a chronological fashion, which means that we're going to account for the first sale on the list, then the next sale. Two, this list has both sales and purchases for the period. And so since we're only concerned with calculating the cost of goods sold and the cost of ending inventory, which basically means how much did it cost the company to make the purchase, we will not be concerned with the sales price. See, remember gang, when we're dealing with a merchandising company, they will always sell the goods at a higher price than which they pay for. Therefore, the selling price equates to the revenue that was earned, which allows them to calculate their gross profit. But we are not concerned with that at the moment. And so what I like to do is scratch out the sales price just so that it doesn't confuse you as we use this shortcut method that I've developed. And so with that being said, I think we're ready to go into the calculation. And so we're doing LIFO. And remember, LIFO means the last thing that you purchased was the first thing to come out of the business, the first thing to be sold. So whenever we're practicing LIFO, we technically start from the bottom of the most recent purchase. But you know what? Before we get into cost of goods sold, first let's identify how many goods we have available. Let's do that. And then next we're gonna identify the goods that we sold for the period, okay? And so in terms of the goods available for the period, how do we calculate the goods available? Well, your calculation for the goods available is simple. It's beginning inventory, plus all of the purchases made throughout the period. And so what we're gonna do is simply add the beginning inventory of 20 units to the purchase on the 12th of five units, and we're gonna also add the purchase on the 23rd of two units. And we're also gonna add the purchase on the 25th of five units. So that gives us a total goods available for the period of 32 units. And obviously again, if we're trying to calculate the units sold for the period, we just add up the sales. We have two particular sales, one on the 20th and one on the 30th. And so we're gonna add the 10 units sold on the 20th plus the eight units sold on the 30th, which will give us 18. We were to subtract the units sold from the units we had available throughout the period, that will give us our ending inventory in units. So 32 minus 18 gives us 14. So what do we have here, gang? 
regardless of the method that you use, this information will remain valid. At the end of the day, we will always have 14 units in ended inventory. And we will always sell 18 units throughout the period. The only difference from the methods will be based on the cost, how much the cost was, okay? So with that being said, we can now go into the cost of goods sold. And since it's the perpetual method, we're gonna break the sales down. So based on this particular inventory list from a chronological fashion, the very first sale occurred on the 20th. So our first sale was 10 units. So now the object of the game is to account for the 10 units. Where did those 10 units come from? How much did those 10 units cost us? We're practicing LIFO. The LIFO tells us that the very last purchase will be the first purchase to be sold out of the business game. Now, I want you guys to pay close attention because I find that a lot of people make this mistake initially. My question is, since the 20th of January, what is the very last purchase made? Now, some people may be thinking because of the LIFO method, the very last purchase occurred all the way down on the 25th, but that's incorrect. Why? Because the 25th is in the future. Just that simple, gang. We can't account for a purchase in the future that hadn't existed. We are talking about the 20th. We are right here. So if we're practicing LIFO, the very last purchase since the 20th occurred on the 12th. This is the very last purchase right here, gang. So that's gonna be the first to be sold. So we have five units that cost us $12 on the, tw on the purchase on the 12th. And so we now have five more units to investigate for the first sale. Now, since it's the 20th, gang, I want you to laser in on the list. Those units can only come from one place. Again, we can't go into the future. They can only come from one place. And what's the only place that they could come from? Beginning inventory on January 1st. You got it. And so those last five units sold came out of beginning inventory at $10 each. So we have now accounted for the whole 10 units that was sold on the 20th. All we have to do is total the cost. So we have 12 at five, that gives us 60. And then we have five at 10, that gives us 50. So our total cost of goods sold is 110, $110 for the first sale. Those 10 units cost us $110 for the very first sale. So now we're ready to account for the second sale. The second sale was for eight units, which means that we have to find out how much did those eight units cost us while practicing LIFO. And LIFO dictates that the last thing that you purchase is the first thing sold. So again, we are raised with the same question. As of the 30th, what was the last thing purchased? Well, the last thing purchased occurred on the 25th, those five units at $20. And so all of those five units at $20 will be sold. We now have three units left to discover what were the costs. And so we have to ask ourselves again, what's the last purchase that we've had since this sale? Well, we've already sold everything out of the, the 25th, so that's no longer there. So now we move up to the 23rd. There's two units in the 23rd and they cost us a total of 15 each. And we have one more unit to look for, gang. And so we keep moving from the bottom up to account for these sales. And so where will it come from? Will it come from the purchase on the 12th? No, it will not come from the purchase on the 12th. Why? Because we have sold all those units in the first sale. We no longer have five units left at 12. See, they were originally sold in the first sale. 
So we can't sell those, they're already gone. So where's the only place remaining that could account for this last unit sold? Beginning inventory, gang. That one unit sold came out of beginning inventory and it cost $10. So now we've accounted for the eight units in total for the second sale. Now we just have to add them up. So that gives us a total of 140 for the second sale. So our cost of goods sold, gang, will be the combination of both. So our cost of goods sold for the period that will be on the income statement consists of the first sale of $110 plus the second sale that cost us $140, which give us a total cost of goods sold of $250. So before we move on to ending inventory, let's adjust how many units are left in beginning inventory. We started out with 20 units, remember gang? But in the first sale, we sold five units at 10. So that left us with 15. Then we also sold in the second sale an additional one unit at 10. So that leaves us with 14 units remaining. And guess what, gang? We already know at the end of the day, we have 14 units remaining in ending inventory. So we can clearly identify that those 14 units all came out of beginning inventory and cost a total of $10 each. Remember what I told you, gang? When we're dealing with LIFO, cost of goods sold starts from the bottom of the list and then inventory starts from the top. So it makes perfect sense why all of our ending inventory is sitting in beginning inventory. So our ending inventory on the balance sheet will give us a total of $140. So there you have it, gang. A surefire way to calculate cost of goods sold and cost of ending inventory under the LIFO method. If this makes sense to you, please like, subscribe, and share the channel with your friends so they also can chase the bags. It's always a pleasure to share this time with you guys, and hopefully I will see you soon. Bags!